What is up, Living Soil Nerds? Happy Wednesday to you. Uh, we got Marco here uh, on the other side of the world, basically, hanging out in Spain, uh, somewhere where, you know, that's definitely on my bucket list. I know you got the cathedral in the background. There's just a lot of, uh, like, allure and sexiness to uh, Spanish culture and, uh, like, eating healthy foods and staying up really late and kind of partying with friends. I know that's kind of their culture as well and, and going to... I don't know when they sleep, to be honest, but, you know, just kind of having that lifestyle where it doesn't necessarily mean at 11 o'clock that, that the night is over. And so I want to throw it over to you, Marco. Let's kind of talk about what's been going on. I know a lot of people have kind of fallen in love with Spanibus, especially in America, with uh, less and less of the, you know, I guess more of the events that people are willing to travel for. There's very few of them that are left. Uh, so I know that more people were able to go to Spanibus this time because they were choosing not to go to other places. So I want to throw it over to you, buddy, and let's kind of get into the nitty gritty of what you've seen. Yeah, man, I appreciate y'all. Feel like feels like it's been a little while, shit, since we, you know, didn't didn't do our show last week. But um, yeah, man, made it on over to Spain. You know, um, you know, one thing about thinking if you're gonna plan international trips, you know. <laughs> these days and times man it seems like it's very very likely that like you'll have a flight delay you know that's a very high likelihood i met a couple people that had flight delays so when you're planning out just give that i mean shit we had to kind of throw it that way you know what i mean we we went to part of our flight and the next leg got delayed so they ended up having to put us in a hotel so we kind of missed a little bit of our deal so we ended up getting here um on friday which was cool um Spanibus kicked off on Friday. Um, I didn't go the first day because, like I said, travel was crazy. So I said, well, shit, we're going to regroup and then hit it hard Saturday. But a lot of people I talked to, Chilbert. <laughs> yes, those guys, I met them over there. And um, but a lot of people said Friday was super, super packed, um, you know, at Spanibus. And, and I get it. it was, Saturday was fairly packed, too. Um, but man, it was dope. But I think it's one of those trips, like, like you said, Brian, I like to stack up things. You know what I mean? We want to stack up, um, you know, the way things work, do multiple things with one, with one, um, motion, you know what I mean? So coming over here, Spanibus is awesome, but then also to tag that on to a, a longer vacation, if you will, to kind of, um, I'm using it as my jump start to my year 50, you know what I mean? I'm about to be 50. So like another thing you hinted on was the food over here is awesome, you know? So, um, yeah, let's, we'll talk a little bit about everything, but Spanibus in general, man, was dope. It was like, um, very, it was like, like I said, it was packed. There was tons of, um, of vendors, um, tons of, uh, my wife said it almost seemed like a trade show type atmosphere. She does a lot of the beauty trade shows. A lot of things were being sold. But um, the cool thing was there was a lot of people there that you that you had the opportunity to meet, too. Like Jeff Lowenfels was there. Um, there was people that just, like, randomly had lunch with him and stuff like that. So, um, you know, there was a lot, of, a lot of people there, you know, you could meet and greet and kind of reach out to if you can find them. You know, it was pretty tough, though, with, with how busy it was. But um, so, yeah, it was, it was it's not a huge venue. I thought a few things I'd said, you know, it could have been, it was a little bit packed for the size it was and talking to other people, they said they used to do it at like a stadium, um, which was way bigger. So people had a lot more space to spread out. Um, I think one thing that they could tighten up on is get more, a little bit more seating for people to eat. Cause a lot of people had to eat, but there was this one section that like it was grass or so people were just lined up sitting down on the ground eating, you know, stuff like that. Um, and all that could have been like tables and stuff like that. Um, but it was packed, dude. It was like a lot of people, you know, almost shoulder to shoulder, uh, pretty, you know, pretty slam packed in there. So when you're walking around, you can openly just buy genetics from the tables. Like when you're saying it's an open market, it's it's open to uh, THC seeds and, and anything that you kind of want from feminized to regular to auto. Yeah. Yeah, that was the cool thing about it. Um, I was pleasantly surprised because, you know, a lot of the some of the places, you know, they don't have any of that. It's just all products. So here um, I was actually able to meet. Um, if you guys follow me on my grow page, you know, I grow a miracle fruit. I've got a keeper that I work, you know, found and worked through. And um, so one of my keepers is miracle fruit. Well, that's a symbiotic genetics um, from symbiotic genetics. And um, their guy, Vince, some years ago, you know, gifted me a nice gift pack of seeds and um, Miracle Fruit was one of them. 
And so I just been working through those and kind of, you know, finding my keeper. Well, when I was working through them, um, you know, there was a scent in there that I had never smelled before. There was a turp in there and I couldn't really pinpoint it. So like when I, when I talk about my miracle fruit, when people say, well, what kind of fruit is it? And I'm like, well, it doesn't really smell like a fruit, a specific fruit. It's more like a juicy fruit gum or kind of an in general. So there was a turf in there. I never really knew what it was. I, I, well, its parents are um, a mimosa V6 times um, super lemon haze. So I knew it, you know, it was in there. I never had mimosa. Well, fast forward to now, I got here to Barcelona and one of the first clubs um, I go to, the one that I went to like five years ago, um, had mimosa in there. So I grabbed mimosa and this mimosa was that other terp that I didn't had and never tasted before. Right. So, OK, boom, mimosa. They're heavy on mimosa. It was really good, too. Um, it was like one of those strains, no matter how you grew it, it felt like that it was going to be good because it really wasn't you know, grown excellently, probably wasn't handled excellently. They're doing Bovita packs and the things and, you know, shit that I don't really do. They could have made it even better. So anyway. This mimosa is lovely, loving it. So fast forward, I go on into Spanibus and then I go to the Symbiotic Genetics tent. And now they have a collab that's, that they did with TH seeds. So it's their mimosa V6 plus TH seeds pure Afghani. So I grabbed that and I spoke to the breeder who bred my miracle fruit and we were just talking and chopping it up and stuff. And um, so my, I actually got to grab some genetics um, from them, which I'm going to use to now um, keep, you know, keep working on my miracle fruit line. I want to take it a little farther. You know what I mean? So I was able to grab some of that. I met a few other breeders, man, some guys that people don't even know about, like they're, you know, like, it's, like there's a different world over here in Europe too. You know what I mean? Like we kind of know our folks, you know, all the folks around the show and people outside of that, but in Europe it's a whole different world too. So I've met some other breeders, which are, um, working on some really unique terps. Um, so I was able to link up with them. We're going to share some things and, um, but yeah, man, it was cool. You get to grab genetics. There's, you know, big breeders were there. Um, I didn't, you know, I, I, I made my way around. Um, I kind of spoke to who everybody I wanted to, but yeah, that was a cool thing about it. You can, um, definitely get in there and talk to the breeders and stuff. So that was cool. So, um, yeah, man. Uh, uh, so yeah, it seems like so a lot of people, uh, you know, e even from our community seem to make it over there. There was like an organic cup. That I saw a lot of like familiar faces were judging and yeah, it just it just seemed like it was a little more um, I guess from that from an outsider's perspective, it seemed like it was organized compared to some of the the latest uh, cannabis type events uh, where there's actually like some thought going to it. Always ways to obviously improve, but I mean even at the event that uh, that I went to with you before you won it the year before, I mean that was kind of a little bit of a shit show with all that kind of stuff. It's right. Like, that's the sad thing about a lot of cannabis events is they kind of do have that where people just kind of almost expect it to something to not be right or the way that I guess they yeah. handled the tickets last year. So to see everybody for the most part saying that they had a great time, you know, hats off to, I don't even know who puts on Spanibus to be honest, but whoever no, does, I'm sure it's a, a committee or a few people, you know, hats off to them because for people to spend, I mean, I don't want to get into it, but I would imagine to, for you and your wife to fly all the way to Spain to be a part of Spanibus, uh, you know, while you're while you're on vacation, at least in my family, we don't really worry about money, so you're going to uh, some decent restaurants and eating well and stuff. So to put all that yeah. out there and then, um, you know, hopefully find those connections. I think that's where I, I was thinking that you'd probably shine is that the fact that yeah. uh, not everybody wants to be on Instagram outside of the United States, and so you might be able to find just a you know, quality, quality individuals that have no, uh, you know, reason to be on Instagram pretty much. Exactly. And I think that's for the most part, an American thing. Yeah. I, that's, that was my biggest thing for the connections on that. end. I wanted to make new connections. I didn't want to, you know, come over here and just hang with the guys that I already kind of are I'm familiar with, you know what I'm saying? And so that's kind of where I'm at. And then even now traveling around, like we start in Barcelona and then here, this is Sevilla or Seville, as we say it in the U.S., Sevilla is how they say it, um, we'll be here one more day and then heading down to even farther south to the coast. And then um, I'm going to be linking up with some local guys with some farms um, 
on the way down there too that just met right off of ig you know what i mean guy you know like hey man you're, you're in my area i'm like okay that's what's up so let's link up and that's you know kind of what we're doing because man there's like you know you know i wanted to put you know be outside the box you know i want to think bigger you know a little bit more broader than kind of the even the genetics that are like tried and true for us you know if i if i catch something that's different you know that's that's something unique to me that's kind of worth you know pursuing and, and checking out so um yeah that's that's kind of where that's what kind of where i'm at were there a lot of different genetics like in the early days man especially when capulator was popping off his booth was cl the clear winner if you will of interest from the community was there anybody's genetics that we might not necessarily heard of or have heard of uh, that seemed like their booths were popping off like that? There was. I mean, there was, like, some ones, like, I, it, I, didn't, I, didn't, I don't know if enough about them, but, like, this one called Medical uh, Strains or whatever seemed very popular. It was, like, a red, kind of reddish coloring, kind of that red cross look, you know, kind of going on that medical tip. And I see they had a lot, a lot of people hitting the booth. Um, of course, greenhouse, you know what I mean? They're, they were, they always going to have be heavy right there. So they were, they had a good little following there. Um, and in general though, Brian, it was one of those deals where it was kind of so packed. You never knew like, where is this line ending? Where is this line starting? It's just kind of like shoulder to shoulder, just great jump in, get in where you fit in. Um, so, and in general, it was just kind of packed, but what I did see, man, uh, what we're talking to people, um, even at the clubs, cause like, if you come to Spain, Spain is one place, like, if you know, I did not, you know, I don't, I usually travel, you know, with my own meds, but you know, going abroad like this, there's, it's not worth taking that chance or risking that. So when you come to Spain, you have to be a member of a club. So you'll go online, you'll find a local club, whatever town you're in, and you go there and then you pay a membership fee, show your passport, blah, blah, blah. And now you put money on your books. When you put money on your books, then you're allowed to go in the back. And in the back, then now you don't talk about money anymore. You know what I'm saying? You just talk about, oh, I'd like to try eighth of that. And I try eighth of Super Lemon Haze, whatever. Boom, they ring it off your deal, give it to you, you do your thing. Um, so, you know, linking up with the clubs is crucial. Now, is it is the quality that we, you know, we're accustomed to? No. Um, are there some strains that I feel like are hot, very crucial, very good strains that if they're in the right hands, they would be excellent? Yeah, there's some really good strains. And that's what I look past. I kind of look past the um, the growing pains of it. Like, I, I know they're rough handling, like, because when the guy, I met the um, the uh, owner for one of the um, clubs right here in Sevilla, and he let me kind of see the private stash, right? So that's now the big tubs. You're not, you're not in the little jars no more behind the counter. He give, takes me to the big tubs. Well, first thing he does, you know, shake it up. You know, look in here, shake it up. You know what I mean? Like, you, you get what I'm saying? So it's like you got to look past the whole you know, they're still babies in the sense of they don't even understand it. If they preserve every little turp, uh, every little um, fucking trichome head, you know, that's even more to add it to your potency. So stuff like that. But I was able to look past that and say, damn, that's a that's a pretty good cut there. You know, what I mean, that smokes pretty good um, if they you know only did a little better with that. But yeah, so the club thing is cool and that makes it really easy here. Um, low stress. Um, but now when I left Barcelona, I was getting a lot of people texting and stuff saying, Hey man, the, the clubs in Barcelona got, um, are getting hit hard. Like they putting a lot of pressure on them. And what that means is they're going in there and inspecting. Now the police can go in there at any time and go, you know, inspect. And that was what they were doing, I guess, probably during span of us, I would imagine. Yeah. I had heard through the grapevine that those clubs are like quotations legal. And so you could potentially be in there, uh, and if they decide to raid that day, you are still taking a chance of getting arrested. They don't, I guess, enforce it, but you are taking that risk when you go in there. And so that's why they have to do it in a certain way. With It seems like the yeah. early days, man, with the T-shirts. There was even a place in Springs, Colorado Springs, that was doing it that way uh, for a while. <laughs> Same way with like Altitude Online. You know, you go in, you buy their T-shirt, and then they give you the cannabis kind of under the... Under yeah, the they were there too. Uh, oh, Attitude. Yeah, they were there. Um, but yeah, man, it was all. Uh, I think that's changed 
has that company changed hands? Because I don't remember. Uh, it, it seemed like a very uh, entrepreneur type uh, lady was running it. And I thought it was two like older gentlemen. I, I might have uh, hmm. mixed my that up. Yeah, so it's interesting if the, if that's true, because in the early days, too, with Greenhouse, you know, there was um, uh, Franco and um, Arjan, and now that Franco's passed away, it, it makes you kind of wonder about all of those genetics, because some people have claimed that Franco was the one that was really doing that stuff, so. Um, I felt like he had the most passion from whenever I would watch the Strain Hunters and yeah. stuff. He really had that kind of that passion for it the most. Um, not to say that the Arjan didn't, but you know, he yeah, said, he, yeah, he had like an Arjan Kush or OG, one of those um, out here in Denver for a while that supposedly he had gifted at one of the uh, expos, and that went like wildfire for a while around here. So, yeah, obviously, I'm not saying he doesn't know what he's doing or anything. It just seemed like um, Franco was more of the maybe the creative mind or something, especially with the like in the early days, man, Super Lemon Haze. There was a couple of years there where you couldn't go anywhere without somebody asking for that or Blue Dreams. Yeah. And they were both pretty much comically easy to grow from, from that kind of standpoint. Yeah, that was one of the first, you know, like strains I bought off Attitude that was like, it said it was lemon and it really was lemon. You know what I mean? It really did. And I was like, oh, shit, that's, that's dope. You know, I remember growing that stuff. But, um... Yeah, man, just um, and you mentioned uh, also uh, food. Well, go ahead. Did you have a question? I'm kind of still on there. Well, just with the genetics aspect, you know, when I was in, I think I was in high school or maybe I just graduated high school, James Loud was appearing um, and, and people started to actually call things like loud cannabis around in the, like Atlanta, especially the clubs in the early days. Mm -hmm. um, and I saw that he was there and I saw that he had just finished his book and that people were, you know, the ones that were able to get their hands on it, I guess, uh, were saying good things about it. So that's pretty cool to see, man, because that guy from the early days when I remember, I'm pretty sure he was still going to Spanibus. Um, and it, that would have been around maybe 2001, 2002. So some He's of these one guys... I wanted to catch up with too, man, and I just didn't catch up with him. His booth was right next to Greenhouse, but every time when I strolled by, I didn't see him in there. So that's yeah, what it is. Those... We'll catch up. Those kind of expos, too, you're always trying to catch up with so many people that you're really only seeing just a handful, especially when you have your own booth. But it's and a lot of the cups are outside the were outside span. It was meaning so like like if that like that cup you said you saw a lot of cats at that was at like the OG club. Each club, some some of the clubs have their you know have those things there. Um, I see Mile High Dave won like the big cup. It looked like uh, right yeah, there he too. Won, uh, right off the, you know, overall flower you know yeah. first place overall like entire thing uh which again kind of shows you you know i mean there's skill sets to it and then the, for the newer farmer obviously we're in the camp of using mother nature uh, but that's the kind of stuff that you would be up against if you were trying to go synthetically from 2024 and, and into the future is you're going to be up against people like mile high dave they've been doing this for a long long time and have mm -hmm. a, a you know a pretty strong reputation around the city for creating kind of more of that underground uh, cannabis that people like. And to be honest, man, especially when I had customers from um, like St. Louis, Louis in the, like Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and those locations, they were asking for the burn on the throat, which usually came from a more synthetic style grow. Uh, they actually started to complain about it uh, when my friend and I uh, at the time were growing with a, uh, more of a living soil approach. Not fully mm -hmm. living soil yet, but still trying to remove a lot of that harshness. So to some exactly. people, they, especially at certain locations, they view that harshness as like, you know, you, you got to cough to get off and all of those kind of phrases. Boom. So sometimes, man, people just prefer certain things. And uh, again, man, has that's real to this day, too, because my homie, he's like that. He, uh, you know, because I'm looking for when I'm selecting, I'm looking for smooth. OK, mm -hmm. damn, that's harsh. I'm not going to probably keep that. Right. You know, that's one my, my non keepers. Well, he hit me. He's like, man, I want that. I need that stuff that makes you cough. You know what I mean? I'm like, well, damn, that's the stuff I don't want. I got <laughs> I, I got you. You know, I noted, you know. So, yeah, I think that that's, like, that's just his personal preference, I guess. Yeah. Like when uh, when I was bartending, I have somebody come in and ask me for gin. You know, not many people. 
not many people want that. So there, there's unique styles and tastes and kind of stuff. And uh, yes, right. Waggle Dance, he won again with that Dante's Inferno. So obviously there's something to uh, those genetics that he's running. Um, and there were a lot of people out there. I saw Humboldt was really heavy with like Mr. Rosenthal. Yes. And uh, I'm sure like showing him a good time. And I saw that oh, they yeah. were winning some awards, genetics and stuff. Uh, Flora Farmer, I saw him, or Flora Farm, I saw him out there. Uh, I think he was out there too with the Auto Cup. So yeah, again, man, big there. big names for. Uh, and Spain's a pretty big place, but not not really, right? I mean, yeah, I was surprised that you don't have like there's there's a whole market of non growers, man. Like I met these two guys from Ireland. Like they they don't like they can't grow. You know, so like there's a whole army of people out there that growing ain't even in their mindset. They're only, you know, about the the, the buying flower and stuff like that. So that kind of made me op open my mind up a little more because, you know, in our minds, we're like, yeah, man, the ultimate goal is to be a grower. Well, some, well, some places that's not even an option still, you know, and I, and I thought that was interesting because I was mentioning some you know, like Ed and we're talking, you know, Rosenthal and stuff like that. And, you know, you know, when you don't know the, you know, teaming with microbes and obviously you're, you're probably not growing, you know what I mean? That's kind of one of those, you should at least know of it <laughs> if you're a grower. Yeah. And in certain locations, I mean, house and garden products have always been big at Spanibus, Advanced Newts. Some of the they were there. Yeah. yeah. So that that's, I think, where a lot of people outside of certain mindsets or ideas that's what they think is the best because it's there you know it's kind of like when yeah. you go to these larger places supposedly whoever has the largest booth has got to be a pretty successful company because how else right you yeah. yeah and that's what i was going for the opposite i was looking for that small booth you know that guy that would you could tell his in his eye that was his you know he wanted that sale for him or he's been working that stuff for him type of thing um, that that was kind of more what I was on. I was surprised people were walking out of there with boxes of Athena, uh, nice, neat, tight boxes. You know, their shit's all boxed up, walking it on out of there. Um, and that's another clever, to me, marketing thing, when you can just sell somebody a whole box. You know, people like kits. You know I bet I mean? some of that was free, because Psychos was doing that for a while, and now there's a Good bunch day. of other brands that copy it, where they basically give you a free run. Or at least a free veg, depending on where you know what what because the they know you'll is. be back. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then you know, if they supposedly they, they won a bunch of awards too. So if you're winning awards, people are gonna come to your booth. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, man. So um the event itself cool. Music could have been a little better, you know, they didn't really have a big stage, like kind of it was just kind of a small little side DJ booth, a little something, something, but uh, other than that, I mean, overall, you know, I'd recommend going, but I would also say, you know, when you fly this far, you want to stay a little longer than a weekend, you know, because a weekend is a rough haul, you know what I mean, over and back. Um, so just try to stretch it out if you can. Um, How does but, that work over there? Like, does is the money going further? Like, No, the dollar's closer. weaker now, man. Yeah. Five years ago, I went, the dollar was stronger, meaning you got more stuff for that dollar. Um, now a euro costs, you know, costs you more. Um, so, so like the average not... hotel room is probably like 200, 250 bucks a night, that kind of stuff. No, you like, it depends on what town you're in. Like a lot of these towns, when you book early enough, you're probably two. Yeah. I mean, 200, you know, you can even get some for a hundred, you know, it's just all about what you want. But if you want, like, I always like a balcony on my stuff. Obviously we like a balcony. Um, if I can, so I always might pay a little bit more, but no, no room was more than, um, you know, two, two some a night. Um, and Barcelona is even more reasonable because the flights over there were super cheap too. Um, so you could probably do like Barcelona for like four days. Room be about one, you know, 150 a night and flights were for, you know, 500 a piece. You know what I mean? That's not bad to get That's over here. Cheap, back. Man. Yeah, yeah. Buying them early. Yeah, my, yeah. I, my wife and I paid for flights for her to go to Chicago. It costs one more. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> you ain't lying. And look, the cool thing, once you're over here in Europe, like all the flights are like a hundred bucks 
50 bucks, 70 bucks, like to fly from here back up to Barcelona when, well, when we're, where we're going to back to Barcelona would be like an eight hour drive. It's like a um, $68 flight. You know what I mean? Like flights are super cheap over here. Um, yeah, Chad, you got to pay the extra balcony fee, man. You got, you got to have it because a lot of towns, you know, you can't just go. I mean, you can, but you don't want to always get up and run on and fucking walk the streets with a J and try to walk quick and mm -hmm. puff pat and come on back, you know, all that kind of shit. Cause these streets are crowded over here, bro. And this is the all. This isn't the full season. We like to come before school lets out. Cause obviously, when school lets out, boom, families, more kids, more this, more that. Um, a lot of the rooms over here, the hotels, you you look for adults only. You know, that's what we do. Um, you know, and that just kind of nothing against kids, but fuck, when you're just two adults, there's no need to kind of be in a hotel. It's all family orientated, you know, type thing. Um, it's more kind of a little bit more in and out, and, you know, easier to me. Um, but, um, yeah, man, that's a, Barcelona is a cool town too, man. So the vibe for the most part is that cannabis is friendly. Like they, you, you got to do it at the club so you don't get arrested and all that kind of stuff. But as long as you're following the basic rules, like you didn't feel like the cops were, uh, going out of their way to kind of like. I don't know, scare you a little bit or anything since you were a tourist? No, the only thing one one cop said something. I, I didn't Nikki thought she thought she heard what he said, but he like pointed at my chain because I I was in it was in the middle of the day, Barcelona. I had my gold on and my um my emblem that I, this one that I usually wear. But um he said something like she thought he said like tuck your chain in. <laughs> <laughs> And I said, I heard him say something, and he kind of pointed. And then when he did, I just kind of held my, held it up like, yeah, you know, like, you like it, huh? And uh, and then he didn't say nothing. But um, I don't know if he was trying to say, like, somebody going to take your shit or what. I don't know what that meant. But I don't – this place feels super safe over here. Like, you know, you don't even feel like you need to be strapped up over here because, one, the gun laws are so strict on guns. You know that even the crooks probably don't have guns, except for in probably the worst of the worst areas. You know what I'm saying? Um, people over here are so chill. Like Spain ain't nothing like Mexico. For some reason, some people think like it's like Mexico, but it's not. This is Europe. This shit is high tech. Even though this shit is old as fuck, outside of the old, then it's all new. You know, newer and high tech. But um. People just keep it moving over here. Like the fascinating thing is like how everybody's walking on scooters and cars and buses and like no one's ever like beeping the horn and like there's never no road rage and everybody keeps moving. And, and somehow like because you give a little bit and, you, and you, you know, you take a little bit as you go. And that's one thing that's real cool about over here. Um, I was telling Nikki, man, if all this was going on, like in the U.S., she's like, yeah, it's just like New York. I said, yeah, but in New York, there's a bunch of honking and cussing and uh, along yeah. with it, you know what I mean? And road rage. And so it's a real chill vibe. Cannabis, you know, it's it's like one of those things you don't really hear anybody saying bad or good about it. You know, like um, I did hear that um, the reason Spanibus moved to the smaller event is because the larger stadium, that little locality was starting to turn their nose on the cannabis. Like they, they like, ah, we don't like cannabis over here. So this other place said, oh, we'll embrace the cannabis. And that's kind of where it's been the last couple of years, they say. Um, we like started that. to see that too. And, and to be fair, I, I feel that it's kind of the same way. It's because when those super large events are there, then you see people that have like their toddler on their hip and they're smoking. There's like tons of smoke. It's just a bad look, I think, for um, for the cannabis community when it's such yeah. a large event that that attracts all kinds. And just like you wouldn't be yeah. uh, taking your kid to a bar, I don't know why you would take your kid to a cannabis. Exactly. Event. Especially, I'm pretty sure they weren't allowed here too. I'm pretty because we didn't see any kids. Yeah. And I would hope that was that, that's the way it should be. You know, I mean, exactly. There's, there's things for adults and there's things for kids. And yeah, I, I like to see that when it's kind of separated. And, the yeah, it was, it was a lot, lot of, uh, you know, I asked Nikki, well, what did it, what did it look like? You know, what's, she said, well, just a lot of young guys, you know what I mean? was kind of her response, young 20s, 30s year old guys. Um, and I said, it was a lot, it was, it was real heavy, real heavy on the dudes, you know, but, um, you know, it is what it is. I think it's a great event. I like it. Um, 
I like the, the 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 reason the I like it because you can get the seeds. That's dope. Mackie made a good point. He said, "Man, um, Spanish this would be awesome, more awesome if it was in um, like Amsterdam." And he's right because the clubs are kind of few in between, and they're kind of spread. You know, you know, it's just the club thing is cool, but it 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 kind of takes like it kind of spreads Spanibus out a little bit because everybody might not know which club has what thing going on or you know mm. and so um you know it's just different but it, it, it's um now, overall you, good event. like did you rent a car or are you just taking like a taxi uber type thing everywhere you're going yeah barcelona man you do not want to rent a car um the reason so it's like the, the other side the street, right? yeah yeah the streets are like this wide like like we like our trucks in the u.s they can't even fit down some of these streets you know like our pickup trucks and so they're really tight and so there's no parking um so barcelona is easy to get around with the taxis and stuff and the ubers um now that we're spread out farther down here um we're gonna rent a car at going down to the coast because then we can hit lo longer day trips but when you're right here like right where i'm sitting brian i mean if there's not over a hundred restaurants in a within 10 minute walk i'm like you know what i'm saying like mm. it's that it's that dense bro like there's so many like fucking gelato shop tapas restaurant and all of them are basically good you know there's better than others some use cheaper ingredients than others but for the most part it's, it's all good food man it's it's usually really good but so you don't need a car like when you go to barcelona don't get a car when you go to um sevilla don't get a car um i wouldn't recommend it because you don't need it you know and i i believe spain is in the the group where gmos have been outlawed so even if you're going to a restaurant you can eat a little bit healthier than you normally would in america if I'm from. yeah exactly yeah, and, and there's no really like chains like talking about it's all like this guy and his family owns it you know awesome. there's not like chain yeah that's even better yeah you know yeah so what and did you see yeah. like genetics wise i, I kind of wanted to go back to that because I, I find it interesting like in the early days obviously that that part of the world and and parts around it were heavily focused like it, everybody thought that that was mecca and then things have changed and America has kind of taken that that flagpole of like super high end quality stuff that the Europeans don't seem to have, or if they do have, keep to themselves for the most part. Um, mm -hmm. So in that in that large area, like when you were walking around, I mean, when I was with you at that one event, you know, you can kind of walk around and see what people are smoking on. A lot of people have it in baggies. Their bag is cloudy, mm -hmm. which everybody knows what that means. Is that how you kind of saw the the community was? They're still a little bit behind the times, or were there people out there that were dabbing with puff goes and uh, and that kind of stuff? Where you, it's kind of more of a high tech scene. Yeah, I think the dabbing's a little bit behind. Um, a lot of the hashes would be more like their um, the ones you wouldn't want to put in a puff co. You know what I mean? Like the real traditional hashes. Like um, homie Chilber hooked me up with some Moroccan, you know, some nice hash from Morocco, and also some that he had um from his personal um so there was a lot of that and then on the um i think even on the hash entries when we were talking with Chilbert and the fellas it was like some of them were kind of more um you know well well there's definitely levels to it so some were a lot cleaner than others um they do like that hash here though you know what i mean they still on that um flour still heavy on that they like to mix um and i'm saying they as kind of generalities but i noticed that people do a lot of tobacco um mix a little tobacco so in their stuff the spliffs are still super popular even if yeah it's a, when i was yeah, going like up playing great. soccer and stuff we got to travel the world and we were smoking cannibal spliffs and stuff when we were probably 13 14 years old and they were saying they do that because the weed wasn't that good back then so they tried to like mix it up with a little bit of a quality uh, tobacco. I think they mm -hmm. enjoy smoking a little bit better. Uh, so that seems to still be around. I, I find that kind of interesting with, with all that. Yeah, I do too. But you know, I found it even more interesting, like like back home, like nephew was, he likes a little tobacco in his stuff. You know what I mean? The youngins seem to be, I know the uh, some of them are on the Fronto leaves and you know, crumble a little bit of that up in there. I don't know if it's because you actually just kind of like a little bit of the tobacco or you don't grow so you gotta kind of stretch your shit out you know i don't know if it's a combination of both 
or maybe even over here when you got the tobacco in there maybe you're a little incognito with it because i've seen a lot of people firing up with what look like you kind of your own home rolled cigarette type deals but they look like spliffs to me um so I, you know i don't know if it's a combination of all that um but i don't really like the tobacco in my stuff man it gives you that kind of that you know that head rush yeah i mean uh when i was younger i feel like we kind of did the same thing i guess but we just did it with a wrap we would get like peach white owls and stuff grape white exactly. owls so it all tastes kind of the same to be honest I mean, shit we eat back then uh, exactly it's, it's kind of funny where things have progressed and i think uh, some people just enjoy you know when i was not smoking blunts anymore and then i'd be around somebody and i would smoke a blunt you do kind of feel that um that feeling of of nicotine which you know, mm-hmm. body's kind of gotten rid of and if, if your body has gotten rid of it i just don't like it anymore i don't even really enjoy mm-hmm. blunts anymore and i used to be smoking those like five six times a day man i know i think that was the last one i had was when we when we were out in vegas that time yeah, that was probably one of the Green best times. Because <laughs> it's hard to fly with all, especially in the, you know, a couple of years ago, even it was hard to fly with the puff goes and all that without them trying to take them. Exactly. Yeah, I didn't see um no, I didn't really peep anybody rocking the puff goes. Um, but um, you know, everything I guess is kind of yeah. That's one thing that makes it I guess its own unique because they're. You know they're closer to the hash, though that traditional hash over here. So it makes sense that they would have access to it and they would like it more. Um, I'm so close here, you know. I'll be like fucking. They can I can take a day trip to Morocco. You know I was looking at that. There's a ferry you can actually drive, and I could put my feet on Africa. You know what I mean within this trip for only an, another couple, you know, hundred bucks. You know what I mean added to it. So, um, you know, being close down here, man. You know it. it you don't realize it until you really just look at the map and you're like, fuck, damn, I'm like, I can see, damn near see Africa from where, I, you know, where you are. So it, that's remember, pretty cool, man. I remember uh, seeing Frenchie in uh, West Palm Beach, California, and he had some Moroccan hash and that that stuff was unbelievable. And then he had some like super heady stuff that he said had, had traces of gold in it. Mm. I, thought, I thought it was fucking cool you know I mean, he, <laughs> but again that you know that's more like Frenchie's style was it had a little bit more of a a uniqueness to it where nowadays uh especially some of the younger younger dudes that kind of dismiss that that style of hash uh some people view it as kind of the purest way to do it and other people turn their nose up it so mm-hmm. that's what's funny to me about cannabis man because it's the only thing i've ever had in my life where it brings that really doesn't matter who it is. It brings people together until you get the purists that all of a sudden now they thumb their nose up at stuff. It's like, uh, you know, I, I try to always just remember and be respectful. Even if, if somebody passed me a blunt, you know, I'll hit it a little bit. Exactly. Exactly. Like, you know, Chilbert's guy passed, you know, passed me a J, you know, respectfully, you know, tried it. You know what I mean? And, and it just, that's just how you, that's just how you do. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you you take like the hash like like you said man you get some young punk oh man what's this dirty stuff you know i don't want this well you got to kind of take it back to that kind of history and give them that give them the respect of where you know this stuff comes from so to me it's always worth um trying a little bit of that local flair you know while you're there you yeah. know i know that the um <laughs> the clubs you know the club scene it you know, they like I said, they could use a little work on the handling and even the edge, you know, from the bud tenders on up. You know what I mean? I think just, you know, then they you get in a little baggy, you know, a little dime bags and stuff like that. But it's just something that's part of the culture. You know, when, when in Rome, whatever they say, do as the Romans. You know what I mean? When I'm here, I, I see what y'all are working with. Um, but so. you would agree that, uh, for the most part, America, even state by state, has kind of taken the crown back uh, for high-end cannabis and, and, I guess, more people kind of readily putting that into the market? I think we always had it because, you know, even they would say Cali weed, like they wanted that Cali weed over here. I think so. I think I think they're still, you know, they, they're latched on to. And, and you can see, by the way, so many of the guys were invited over here, I think, too, for for Spanibus, you know, meaning like giving it some extra root uh, foundation, you know, beefing it up a little bit. Um, that kind of proves that, too. Um, 
but I will say like there, you know, every Europe kind of has its own world too. Like I think, you know, Mackie and them are heavy in Europe. And I think um, I like that we, you know, kind of link up with those guys too. And I think that's where we got room. To, we can grow as well. Is touching a little bit more Europe because um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, you know, it's a, to me, it's, they've been established. Yeah. But there's still growth to be done. You know what I mean? Look at a mile high Dave comes over here and, and, and crushes, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. You know, that's the U S we're you know, coming over here and taking care of business types of things. You know what I mean? So I think that's, that's respected. I now, I wasn't able to judge or see what was the second or what was, you know, what, 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 but, you know, obviously, um, you know, the U S did its thing, uh, as far as that goes. Um, but I will say the way that there's an untapped market for Turks, which people are working on, just like how we got our guys working on stuff kind of on their own and their unique stuff, they got it the same way. And you know what I mean? That's to me kind of where you can, you know, somebody can make a good connection and come in with some new fresh terps and kind of, you know, get a buzz going or refresh, you know, rejuvenate their lines or, you know what I'm saying? Anything like that. It kind of shows you too, you find the right genetics uh, and you can travel the world basically. And I guess if you get like a little bit of luck and some skill, uh, you can turn that into something. And to be honest, man, I saw his uh, his Instagram, the club that they were at, I guess talking about the awards and stuff. It reminded me of like the early days in Atlanta. Just the club it seemed was huge. It was, you know, it just kind of looked, I don't really see that anymore, or at least in Denver. There's not really clubs like that where there's 10,000 people in the club. Kind of Especially club. Cannabis Club, right? I mean, it's right. huge. Yeah. It looked fun, man. It looked fun. Uh, so, yeah, shout out to everybody that was able to go and enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, again, I think there's if that's where it's got to be, I guess, then that's where it's going to be. But it, it is cool to have at least one spot, uh, I guess, in the world where everybody can link up once a year at minimum um, and kind of catch up with things. Because I don't know, man, the, the older I'm getting, I, I really like that stuff and to value it enough to fly out there. You know, you work hard to spend your money on it. And, uh, to be honest, man, I mean, the. <laughs> The scenery behind you is pretty epic. You know, it's, it almost looks like a green screen. You know, that's how like man, wow, nice it looks. It's so nice. Yeah, look at that. I mean, it's look like a beautiful that. cathedral. It's huge too. Yeah, I mean, it, like, and it's like this is like you know, like I always think of the game Assassin's Creed. If anybody yeah. ever <laughs> replayed, I played this that. Is all yeah, I like Assassin's too. Creed, man. Lit, everyday life is crazy. So old and wow. You know, um, yeah, like they, you know, and it's, um, you know, like I said, man, nobody really, you know, messes with you over here. You know what I mean? They say when you do travel here, if you want to walk, you know, when you walk around, like I always like when I leave the club, you know, you kind of you want to be a G about it. You know what I mean? You pop, you, you kind of mm -hmm. ease out there like this one across the, from where you leave the exit of the club, there's a menu for a restaurant. So, you know, when I, when I slid out, you know, I went straight across there and I was looking at this restaurant menu, kind of playing it off. And then you head on down the street, you know, don't be a, don't be a corny guy. And then also put stuff in your pants um, here because they, you know, you have to have a search warrant to search you in Spain, like to go into your crotch area. Um, so just be smart about things, you know, don't be a dummy. Uh, don't be running around loud and trying, you know, doing too much. Um, and, and you'll be just fine, man. Yeah. yeah so be that's a, to be honest, that's the scariest thing to me is getting locked up abroad. Uh, sure. There's even a show that had that exact title. Uh, and that I've seen another one of my episodes. favorite shows. <laughs> <laughs> that shit is scary, man. I mean, because, yeah, and like you had mentioned too, like when you're on vacation, even in America, I mean, there's certain towns and stuff, but you don't want to be walking down the street just smoking, even just minding your own business, because you just never know what's around that corner. And when you don't know your surroundings in that kind of way, I just never want to risk it uh, over mm -hmm. cannabis. You know? so no. I either no, don't smoke or, yeah, find something yeah. like you do where, the other thing in America, too, is there's not too many balconies anymore when it comes to high-rise hotels. I know. Because well, for a darker thing in life. But because of that, it seems like you're in a more, like, uh, traditional, uh, I guess, like, ode to tradition. Because, I mean, isn't it just basically, like, churches, cathedrals, things that have been around for probably hundreds of years? 
right where you're yeah, at. Hundreds. Like these things are like fourteen hundreds, and you know, even yeah, like some. Yeah, of I didn't stuff. want to guess and say something yeah. stupid, but yeah, like around that early, early area. I mean, this stuff is unbelievable. What's behind? Yeah, it. so old. It's so old that it wasn't laid out for cars. You know what I mean? So you got like some like when the first time I went to Barcelona, we did go in with a rental car. Like we drove into to go to our hotel. What's in the Gothic district? The part that looks like Assassin's Creed, like, and so you're on. It tells you where is drive down this street and, and there's literally like it looks like two sidewalks is that wide people all on it but that's part of it the cars you drive on through here and there's people all you know it's just so crazy to to to, to you know the way it is um and it's because it's so old you know it's like fucking you're doing shit it's like are you sure i'm supposed to be driving here and yeah you know it is um Stuff like horsemen on police, uh, police on horsemen. They had we filmed some of them. Uh, they're just like they're walking down the middle of the street on their horses, not giving a fuck. There's all kinds of cars behind them, and nobody's like saying shit. You know, it's just it's just wild. I noticed the police; they don't really look at you like the ones back home. You know what I mean? They they're a little different they seem a little bit more chill over here like they kind of ain't that serious i mean i'm not saying they don't do their job but they don't seem like they're about fucking with people like they're just kind of like minding their business you you're not doing them wrong they're not messing with you type thing um, but yeah definitely locked up abroad ain't no joke and that man on the flight out here we go getting ready for eight hour flight and this guy behind me like this 30 year old guy wants to like kick he's like kicking my seat like kept bumping my seat you know what i mean and i'm like fuck man i'm like bro nikki's looking at me i'm trying you know this motherfucker keep kicking my seat so i finally like i look back i was like hey bro you know you know it's gonna be a long flight man don't kick my seat man and uh if you don't you know something like that he's like well it's, i didn't i'm not kicking your seat you must be making that up so i'm like oh so I'm just picturing the locked up abroad shit. Like I keep running through all these scenarios. That's and, a uh, felony, no doubt. <laughs> on a federal airplane, man. Even if you smack him, that's a felony. Right. I, I done ran through all these scenarios in my head. Okay, smack him up, do the, and they all end up leading going to jail. So I was like, oh fuck. So um ended up just I was like, let me just put it in my mind. Like I have an infant behind me. Like there's a toddler in the seat behind me. So you can't be mad at a baby. So I was like, all right, there's a baby back there. So I just kind of let it ride. But yeah, the whole time, man, this little shit just tests you, man, as you're going through traveling and shit. But you would think people have more sense. Like I learned that shit by sitting behind my dad in a car and I kicked his, you know, kicking his seat don't kick my seat. You know, you learn that shit. Like I'm, and I think, man, this dude probably didn't have nobody to tell him that, you know, like growing up, not even knowing it's disrespectful to kick somebody's seat, man. You know, but that was the worst. That was the worst thing that this happened was this idiot American, uh, you know, kicking my seat on the way in. Yeah. There's always entitled people, you know, exactly i think he was trying to like be tough for his little girlfriend you know because i kind of pimped him up a little bit aggressively so he knew that no one he knew he, he knew you can't touch me you know yeah, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah what are you gonna do man that's i, I Not, like your approach to it hey there's an infant behind me I'm just yeah let it ride. yeah because if there was a baby back there you wouldn't be getting mad so just let it ride man well cool man um you know, moving forward, I think, too, like kind of going out there and stuff and kind of planting that flag, uh, you just never know where these could lead to. And it sounds like you're going to be able to see some personal grows and farms and uh, countryside even. Uh, so, yeah, just yeah, kind of keep cool. us informed. And, um, no reason to really drag this out, man. I just wanted to uh, catch up with you. I know uh, consistency is part of our little motto for our show and everything. And the fact that you are staying up late to talk to everybody about what's going on, man. We appreciate it. And, uh, in a way, man, we salute you for just going out there and, uh, you know, no, nothing's really cheap in this world anymore. So to, to go across the world and have your lady with you and, you know, when your lady's with you, you look, you live a little different than you would like if you were flying yeah. solo, you know, you get a little nicer place, go to a little nicer restaurant. So right. <laughs> yeah, just enjoying life, man. That's what I like to see. And, uh, exactly. Seem like you've been smiling this whole show year to year. Man. So it's cool. 
Yeah, it's been wonderful. And like you said earlier, they, they run late here. You know, like right now it's um, 9.52, you know what I mean, here. It, not, some people are just going to dinner. Like you just go to dinner like now. Even at 10 o'clock, you may just go to dinner, like getting your tapas and eating. And we've been running on like a 12-12. Like part of this whole thing is like, all right, we don't have to. There's my man, Mackie. All right, appreciate you. Uh, you know, like we're running on 12, 12, basically here. Like we're living our, we're kind of like saying, all right, how we live our life. If you know, we don't, okay. You don't have to work. You don't have to necessarily report to anybody to anything. How will we live? So what we're doing is basically 12 hours of fucking walking like crazy eating in between catching maybe a nap here and there. And then about 10 to 12 hours of sleep. You know what I mean? And resting up and doing it again. And like each day, like just today, we got right now 12,000 steps. Yesterday, we had like 15,000 steps. Day before, another 14, 15. Um, so we're, I'm using this to kind of hit, to, to like just almost like a boot camp, right? Like this is a lot of exercise, a lot of good food, a lot of good environment, a lot of positivity. And I'm trying to use that to jumpstart my whole, you know, year. You know what I mean? Gardening's about to come up. So now instead, of, I'm not going to be able to be here walking for 12 hours and enjoying this beautiful place for 12 hours. But when I get back home, I can put that same energy into my garden, into my yard and cleaning up, straightening up, building up. Um, another thing I liked about coming here and going traveling, man, is like just going to the parks, like, we saw so many ideas for different like benches and way to plant things and kind of how to line things out for our home garden. You know what I mean? We'll take a small piece of that, put it in ours and get that little bit of Spanish influence and a little bit of that, um, the vibe they got. So um, lots of reasons to travel, man. And those are a few reasons I'm, we're doing it, man. Just kind of kicking off. I want to do a complete digestive kind of reset all good foods coming in, you know, for these two weeks and, and just, you know, all overall body health, man. Amen to that, man. I think if, if you have had issues in your life and you forget about how your body used to work and then you're able to fix that, you know, I'm, I'm big on keeper. That's how it worked for me kind of thing, fermented foods, basically. Uh, yeah, and then sure. when that goes back into your life, man, it's like, man, I remember this shit. Like the human body does work pretty well as long as you don't feed it saxby's and uh, like uh, right <laughs> in, in and out and like all the southern shit that uh, we've had california shit too man just um eating pure and it seemed like when you're eating those colorful foods i saw uh soil mm -hmm. to oil i think is that person's name yeah okay uh seeing yeah. seeing the food pics come in when you when you see that bright color um you know there's a there's a couple of restaurants here in colorado that have that i think it's even called true food but for whatever mm -hmm. reason, man, when you go to those kind of restaurants and you're eating that, you could even be eating like a hummus or something. It just tastes so much better. And you know that it's uh doesn't have uh, gloss baits and uh, yeah. mouth up and shit in it. <laughs> yeah, I will give Europe props, man. I like Europe, man. This is what Europe is way better at. Obviously, Europe's been around the sun way more than we have, right? Europe is more better at understanding that it's like, it's us. We're the ones eating. Like, we're the ones eating that food. Whereas it seems like in, in America, it's like the FDA says this is okay. or the, But in Europe, it's like everybody understands that we're all, we're all eating this. So then we should take glyphosate out of it, right? We're all eating this. So we should make pro uh, um, antibiotics illegal in the meats. You know, we're all eating this. So even down to like Nikki was Nikki went shopping, you know, we do it. She does her little thing. So even to the amount to popping tags, the tags you pop over here, those are biodegradable. You can't pop them. She needed a little scissor to cut them. Like we're back home. All the tags are that pop plastic. Like they're getting away from that kind of stuff way faster than we are, you know? And I think um, they understand that more that it's the, it's the people, you know what I mean? More so than, in the U.S., we let the system kind of do it and regulate it. And so um, it's always good to travel, man, and learn, and see, you know, kind of different perspectives, man. So I think that's going to – it always inspires you, too. You know, you go back and you're like, yeah, I want more now. I want more, you know, because I, I want to do better. 
I want to live like this. I want more means so I can live like this. Um, Seems so, like they put their money more into family and go. That's why they go out at night. So instead of doing certain things, they all just love, love to eat. Uh, and I can't really blame them yeah. for that kind of thing. You know? I mean, it's, exactly. Uh, I don't know. America, or at least Americans in certain cities, uh, it's material things are what matters. And so they almost like don't want to associate. They don't have the money for certain things so that they can have uh, nicer things to, to kind of like show off to strangers. Uh, and that's what I do like about European culture for the most part is it does seem like family comes first. And then, of course, if there is wealth or something, it seems like it's more distributed to each other. And there's more of a, a kindness to one another in the family and stuff without it just being. I don't know if you had somebody in, a, in, in your family pass away, man, when people when, when the uh, the will isn't taken care of. I don't know if you've ever experienced anything like that, but mm. pe people show their true colors, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, so that's the kind of stuff where I mean, when it's family oriented and that's what I love about uh spanish culture especially is it it definitely seems like they're more into just enjoying one another's company in life and being a human being and probably not sitting at these restaurants deep into each other's phones while they're having a, a quality yeah and actually talking to them you never see that yeah they never see anybody like kind of on their phone at the restaurant because it's always so even me like even you know you don't even want to because like there's so much to look at and it's like people watching and you know, it's just it's just it's just cool, man. You know, just just something different. There is something to getting away, doing a little traveling uh, when you can. You know what I mean? And just recharge the batteries. Let you know, let work or whatever you got to do be kind of that, and then deal with it when you get back. You know. Hell yeah! Hey, there were a couple of questions. We could uh, fire these out and then uh, wrap it up. All right. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, first question from Mad Dog. Uh, what was the best weed that you had seen there uh, at Spanavis? It ha it'll have to be the mimosa. Um, it was very, it was tasty, very good, great effect, high up, uh, you know, uplifting. Had me like daddy ready to go. So it'll be the it'll be the mimosa here. Um, but overall, it was a lot of it, you know, kind of about the same. You know, a lot of it was about the same. But the most most have stepped up a little bit above because I feel like that cut was just a head and shoulders above, no matter how it was grown. Uh, I was even a little worried about this. I was talking to Marco behind the scenes. I've been a bit worried about going to events like this. Good, happy atmosphere. Man, that's a great question. I, even me, bro. Like, I don't, I don't like a lot of crowds. I don't like when I can't, you know, kind of when people are all up on me and shit all too much. Um, it was like that, but it was the vibe was fine. It was a kind of um. It wasn't a well. <laughs> Nikki said, "Damn, they had all these punching bags in there, like you know the punching machines." So it was like um they had those kind of sp sporadically spread around. So she kind of felt like that kind of could be inducive of you know kind of all right now a little bit of violence or extra bravado could be coming out and stuff. But um other it was no issues, man. Everybody was chill. Um, it was more everybody just looky, looky lose, just looking around, seeing who's who, who they think is who, and that kind of stuff. Yeah, but don't don't worry, you can go and have a good time. But it's crowded, it's tight, it's gonna be you know it's gonna be tight up in there. Just thought this was a nice comment um, for you, Marco. Oh, thank you, man. Another question from Pig. Uh, see anything from the Karma guys? I hear nothing but good things about them. Huh. I, don't, I must have missed them. I, no, I didn't catch them, man. I didn't specifically get to their booth. Um, see, I should have did a little more research. I should have looked a little bit more at the vendor list, too, going into it, and then kind of strategically made my plan. But I kind of just went in and wanted to just kind of be in the vibe i kind of wanted to be in my own vibe with my with my wife live you know kind of in our vibe and then whatever happened within that then i was going to be accepting of and that's where you know i kind of did make a few good connections and last question from matthew west did anybody from the eu talk about nitrates and cannabis they have banned nitrates in their food consumption so i would have to believe nitrates and complete forms of nitrogen would be on the band soon. 
I mean, Man, the only thing about person. some of the talks, there were in Sp- a lot of the stuff was in Spanish. Like when their people were presenting and things. So a lot of those were in Spanish. I didn't I didn't catch anybody specifically saying that. Um, but I think that's that would probably boil down to the forms of nitrogen, because obviously, you know, comfrey, you know, broken down in a bucket of water, nitrogen is not gonna be anything that's ever gonna be, you know, on any kind of ban list. But I think the derived forms of nitrogen could be for sure. EU's good at that. They'll go to out in front of the shit and ban, you know, they'll kind of ban it and make sure. Um, yeah, so. That Nikki, what up, Nikki? Hey, Ryan. How are you? <laughs> she said, hey, he said, good. <laughs> yeah, she's sitting over there well, in, the sun, in the shadows. Yeah, we'll let you uh, enjoy the rest of your evening, man. Appreciate you kind of checking in with us on your uh, vacation. You know, not everybody wants to do that, so appreciate you for that. And uh, I hope more people see that for for the people that can uh, have the means to make it. Maybe Spanibus is now the the destination uh, for that uh, yearly kind of thing, and a couple other places, obviously. But uh, from a worldwide point of view, uh, Spanibus seems to be. Uh, oh, so the lady came and turned the light on. <laughs> No, I got light. <laughs> now that we're done. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, man. It's kind of cool definitely. either way, man. It really is, man. She put these little globe lights on. Um, yeah, and then um, in the way because Spain is so cool, you can't go wrong. If you can stay in Barcelona, that's awesome. That's right on the Mediterranean. If you can make it to some other cities, hit that too because everywhere just is is great since that we've been thus far. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, I'm glad we were able to do a little show, even though it wasn't too long. But um, and next Wednesday I'm traveling, man. So we're gonna have to do something big for that following Wednesday. Right on, man. Yeah, we'll All talk right. behind the scenes and everything. Uh, safe travels to you, and again, keep showing that food because it does look delicious. And there's just something too when those colors pop, man. It's it's kind of like good at high end cannabis or something. You just you scroll a couple times, you look at it over, you know, a couple times before you move on. Exactly. <laughs> All right. See you guys All next right, week. Take care. Bro.